guys, I'm Della Rani. Here's what's coming up on Talk About. Myanmar students discuss their country's transformation. For nearly 50 years, Myanmar, also known as Burma, was ruled by the military junta. In 2010, all that changed when the country held its first general election and released democracy advocate Aung San Suu Kyi after decades under house arrest. Now, as the country emerges from years of isolation, it's finding its voice amid rising religious tensions. A few months ago, I visited Myanmar and found myself in the thick of these protests. Buddhist monks protesting against the publication of a Time magazine edition that declared the leader of the 969 movement, Bhikkhu Bharatu, as the face of Buddhist terror. The 969 movement says it's a peaceful grassroots movement dedicated to promoting and protecting religion. But it's also concerned that Islam could overrun Myanmar and that Buddhists must stand up and save their way of life. Myanmar's population is almost 90% Buddhist and its Muslim community has no elected representation. There's been ongoing violence between the two religions and Human Rights Watch claims that entire Muslim neighbourhoods have been torched from the attacks. While I was in Yangon, I caught up with a group of students from the Yangon School of Political Science who shared their views on religious freedom and the country's newfound democracy and freedom of speech. So let me begin by asking you, we happen to be here on a day when there are a bunch of protests that are taking place behind us. Now, first of all, how common are protests in Myanmar? Because this is a country that's been closed off for 50 years. Uh, I think uh, this is a good sign to uh, express our feeling uh, because uh, we didn't have that chance uh, before the 2010 or 2011. So after the 2011, we had uh, that kind of chances to express our feeling very freely. So that's a good sign of the political uh, progress here in Burma. But even though I'm not uh, agreeing with uh, some of the issues that they are protesting right now. You, you like the fact that there is free speech and, and that there are these protests and that they can voice their, uh, their concerns. But how do you feel when there is, you know, in recent times there have been a lot of um, violent attacks between religious groups, between Buddhists and Muslims. What impact does that have on you guys and in your daily life? The recent religious conflicts between the Buddhist and Muslim communities in Myanmar has impacted a lot on the daily lives of people here. We've had friendly relations for a long time, but now things will be difficult to repair. We went through earlier and we said who is Buddhist and who is Muslim, and um, I know that you said you're Buddhist and you're Muslim, you both are friends. When you see protests like this taking place behind us, which clearly is a sign that there are religious tensions in the country, how does that impact the both of you and your friendship? Basically, uh, we have the culture that we do not discriminate each other and even though she is Muslim, I'm Buddhist, uh, it's, you know, you know, it's not a case. You know, the, uh, the case, uh, the thing is that we love each other, we have a uh, strong friendship and we just forward to help our country, to build our country. Most, most of the Muslim people and Myanmar people stay together, live together in uh, warmly relationships in, in, in our country. So that's, that's not, that's not, that's not make sense for me. Now you're all political science students. Why did you decide to study political science and what change do you hope to bring about through your studies? I'll start with you, Sitmo. Uh, yeah, because why I study political science is to understand systematically and to learn the political science academically. Because I, I believe without any doubt that uh, uh, if we want to create a democratic country, we need to learn the democracy, democracy and the human rights and systematically. And if we are interested in politics, uh, of course, we had uh, protesting and we had a movement I in the history, but those movements and um, protesting are very important to take down the military government and military regimes and genders and dictatorship. But right now, we are, are creating the new nation. What about you? What made you decide to study political science? And, you know, do you, how do you feel about the changes that have taken place in Myanmar over the last few years? Political science got the... I wanted to study political science to help Myanmar's development. There are many students, however, who are not allowed to study courses on politics at government-run schools, so I decided to study at a private university. 
uh, you know, changing a country is not depend on the government 100%. Yeah, you know, it's also depend on us. So if we walk, it will be many, many change in the future. If we do not walk, there's nothing. How do you feel when you see this type of stuff behind us? Yeah, as a young student who are interested in politics and who studies uh, political science, I'm, I uh, agree with the freedom of expression. But at the same time, I di totally disagree with the, uh, the, 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 the mixing of the church and state. Right now, the, the, the situation is like uh, the Buddhist monks and they are missing with their government stuff. So I really oppose, I strongly oppose that notion and I believe in secularism and I believe in separation of church and state.